Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Chrono Play's Old Ass Games. Today, I am taking a look at the Fairchild Channel F, a console released November of 1976 at the price of $170. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, except when you adjust for inflation, that's like 700 bucks. And you thought the PS3 was expensive when it was released. Holy crap. So, let's take a look at this thing real quick. It is... A lot more slick looking on initial look than, say, the Radio Shack TV scoreboard that I did the other day. We've got wood grain finish. We've got nice black shiny plastic. We have very distinct keys. You know, it just looks better. Now, there is a slight little difference between this guy and a lot of the other consoles that I've ever played with. And that is that it has attached controllers. These don't come off at all. And it has an attached power cable and video cable. They don't come off at all either. So it's a little weird. <laughs> the top of this thing also comes off. It kind of confused me the first time that I saw it because it was just off and it was actually kind of, I don't know, sitting like this when we got it shipped to us. So it wasn't you know, very intuitive because I had never seen one of these things before. This was a first for me. And basically it sits like that. There is a space in here for the controllers where you have to wrap up the cable around them, and I don't like doing that, so I tend not to hold the controllers in there. Yeah, now, the very distinctive thing that the Fairchild Channel F has going for it is it's the first of the Generation 2 video game consoles. And the Generation 2 video game consoles are distinguished by having programmable ROM cartridges. So this has got a ROM slot right here, that you can just insert the cartridge to, clicks into place, and there you go, you've got your game. This also has another very nice little feature. And if we turn on our old 1972 Trinitron TV, this is once again connected via VHF and it's 70, 75, 74 ohm connector, whatever the, the, the twin pins that I was showing off yesterday. Um, and I have it already attached to the TV. And we reach around back of this thing and turn it on. We get this, and it's just a blue G and a question mark. Well, what do you do with it? Well, you press one of these four buttons. We have a reset button. We have one, two, three, and four. Now, one and two are labeled. One is labeled hockey, two is labeled tennis. Three is game three, four is game four. These were designed to have four games per cartridge, which is interesting. It goes to show how much storage they had in the cartridges at the time, but how little programming went into one of the games. I don't know, maybe they were more advanced cartridges. I only have the one, so I can't really tell for sure. But uh, if we hit one, you'll notice it comes up to what looks shockingly like the hockey game we had in the Radio Shack. But of course, it's in Keller. And it is really, it, I mean, it is a thing. Right now it's asking, it says S question mark. It's asking, do I want to start? If I don't want to start, I can press one and it'll ask the time. That's what it's asking now for the T. It's asking for the time and I can set it to two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or 20 minutes. Boop. So we have a 20 minute match now. And now it's, again, it's asking to start. And I don't think it does anything else. Does it do anything else? Ah, it's asking for the mode. You know, I actually looked up the manual for this thing and I totally forget what these things are. Um, I think mode is actually speed, how fast it goes. Does three do anything? I don't think three does anything. No, three does not do anything. And four is start. and it starts bouncing back and forth. Do we have noise? If we do, it's getting lost in the static because 
I can't hear anything. Uh, again, this is an old 1972 Trintron. It may have some problems like a curving right here that you can see. We have a uh, capacitor that needs to be replaced in the TV and we haven't done that yet. So that's what we got. So how do we play these games? Well, we have these interesting controllers, which I have tucked around back for appearance sakes. Oh, and we are tangled. Hang on a second. How are we tangled? Oh, that's how we're tangled. Okay, there we go. We have these very interesting looking controllers, at least very interesting looking to me. They're labeled R and L, so this is still before we had player one and player two. And, uh, yeah. L is this car this one, and R is the other one, obviously, so left, right, duh. Now the controllers I find fairly interesting because you saw me go up and down. There's also a left and right. So this thing, you know, works like one would expect. Bloop. Except there's also other features. You can pull up on the controller and down on the controller, and it will control the uh, goalie, I guess. You can call it that. Wee. But there's also, you can also twist the controller. So as you can see, it's turning so you can deflect it in another direction. Because if you notice, if I go up and it bounces off the bottom of the paddle, the ball's not going down any. So it's not based on where the ball hits on your paddle, it's where your it's how turned your paddle is. I'm sure that's confusing as I'll get out. There is no single player mode that I could ever find, which brings up a very good question for me. When was the first video game that had single player? I don't know. But anyway, so that's uh, hockey, and it runs pretty much like one would expect it to run. The only difference between this version of hockey and the Radio Shack version of hockey, pretty much, outside of the strange controls, is the fact that uh, the left player is both here and the right player is both here. Unlike the Radio Shack one where it was one of the players, the other player, one of the players, the other player. So it's a little different. But that's because that didn't have a side to side. So I bet you if we... Yeah, if we go the whole way over, we can go the whole way over and totally glitch out the game, honestly. <laughs> The ball's actually passing through the opposing paddle. And that's exactly what happened. The ball passed through the opposing paddle. So, yeah. Interesting game. So if we reset... And that's how you get to pick another one. You, there's a reset button. We go to game number two, which is tennis. We get Pong, basically. That's what this is. It's Pong. Do we want to start? Yes, I want to start. And you'll notice that it is based on uh, where it's hit on the paddle for it to work. So if I hit it on the bottom of the paddle, it'll go down. And if I hit it on the top of the paddle, it'll go up. In the middle of the paddle, will go back and forth. So you can see that it actually has the programming in it to be based on where the paddle is. But I guess for the hockey one, they wanted to switch it up. Like, I can't do anything else. I can only go up and down in this game. I can't turn or, yeah, I can't do anything at all. So they wanted to, they, they wanted to be, you know, I guess they wanted the hockey one to be a little bit more interesting and they would have succeeded. I can imagine that game would be kind of difficult to get the hang of and control in all the different ways to make it do what it's supposed to do. <clears throat> All right, so those are the two built-in games. Let's shut this thing off and take a look at the video cart, as it's called. This is the first video cart, and it has tic-tac-toe, shooting gallery, doodle, and quadra-doodle, which brings up all kinds of different possibilities. Before this, basically everything was just a duplicate of Pong, slight variations, tennis, hockey, that kind of thing. But now we have tic-tac-toe. That's 
fairly unique thing. So let's turn you on. And we can see it's a different color, so it's actually booting off of the ROM cartridge itself. And let's see, we have you know four games to choose from, so let's start with Tic-Tac-Toe. And it doesn't ask anything. It doesn't ask for speed, it doesn't ask for time, it doesn't ask for anything. Most of that makes sense, except for one thing. This game should really ask if you want one player or two player. Because <laughs> this game is single player. I crap you not. Um, let's see, left controller? Yes, left controller. Does the right controller work too? Yes. So the left controller and the right controller both control the same player in tic-tac-toe. So, boop. So you use left and right. You, there is no up and down. You use left and right to pick where you want your uh, X to go, basically. And then you pull up to do it. And then the computer picks its spot. So this is a single player game. Boop. Boop. Of course, it's tic-tac-toe. It's actually kind of difficult to win. And you push in to reset. Oh, there we go. I've already run the, won this match of tic-tac-toe, which sounds interesting, but I've already won it. Uh, let's see. Uh, there and... There. There. I won a game of tic-tac-toe. <laughs> Uh, if you ever play tic-tac-toe against somebody and you go second, never go into one of these spots. You can guarantee a win. The first player can guarantee a win if they go in center and you go into one of the sides. Go into the corners. All right, so reset. Let's go with game two, which is Shooting Gallery, which is a very strange game to me. Uh, so S. S is Start. So, I bet you we have time. Yes, we have time, so we can pick our time. Let's set it for two minutes. Do we have a mode? We have a mode. Uh, boop. I have no idea what these buttons do. It doesn't actually say. I don't have a manual for this cartridge, and the instructions on the cart doesn't work. You know, they're not very detailed. Uh, do we have a hold? No. I don't know what hold does, so start. All right, so you have, you are this guy right here. You can turn. Oh, can you turn? No, you can fire. You can't turn. You push in to fire. And that's it. That's, that's the entire game. So basically what you have to do is you have to determine where you're shooting initially from the angle, how fast the um, duck, I guess, goes, and you have to lead it, basically, to be able to shoot the target. Boop. And it counts how many hits you hit, you've made, how many total shots you've taken. And then from there, you can, you know, which, see which one's best. See what your hit-to-miss ratio is or I guess hits to shots taken. Now some of these I think qualify as completely unfair because you have to shoot before you get to your target or before your target shows up sometimes. Honestly, it's not that great of a game. I'm not a fan of this game at all. Come on. Ah. Yeah, not a fan of this game. But it shows that they're starting to think outside the box when it comes to video games, since, like I said, most other games that I've seen so far from Generation 1 were all based off of Pong and variations of Pong. Except, of course, for the Odyssey. The Odyssey was... Well, the Odyssey was a board game. It was a completely different thought process. Let's reset and go on with... Our third game, which is the Doodle game. 
And you can see there is a dot here and there is a dot there. We control this dot. And this dot, I think, shows the color, I think. Oop. Trying to remember how to play this thing. Uh, I am very confused on how to play this thing. <laughs> like I said, there's no manual for this. But basically what it is, it's a paint program. And that's really all it is. It's just a paint program. It doesn't really do anything else. Um, you turn it to pick your color. Really hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, push in to reset, pull out to change the size of the brush, turn right to change the color of the brush, and turn left to change the mode of the brush. So you can, you know, now we're in paint mode. Now we're in erase mode. Oh, and now we're back into paint mode. There is no just general off mode, I guess. Oh look, it's almost the Commodore logo. <sighs> so yeah, that is Doodle, and it's a fairly basic paint program. I'm sure with a lot of practice and patience, you can do some really interesting things. I do not have the patience for that. Reset. And then we have my final game, at least the final game that I have, and that's Quadradoodle. I'm doing nothing at the moment. This seems to be auto-playing itself. Okay, now I can control it. That was interesting. So, why it's called Quadradoodle, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if it's supposed to do something. Like, is there a mode for Quadradoodle? I can change colors, I can activate, I can erase. If I pull out, it changes zoom. If I push in, it resets. Is there a pre... Yeah, I don't know. But that's what that is. So basically, Quadradoodle is a lot like Doodle, but it has a little bit more of a feature that I don't understand. Basically. Probably because I don't have a manual. Boop. So there it is, the Fairchild Channel F. There it goes. Now we have a demo mode while I do my outro. Uh, yes, we have the Fairchild Channel F, the first of the second generation video game consoles, and the first to have interchangeable ROM cartridges. So the games themselves are on the cartridges, unlike the Magnavox Odyssey, where they were just jumper pins. So I will end the video here, and I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.